All right, g'day guys. Welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. It's been a little while since I've done a uh, just a video talking to the camera. In fact, I think it's pushing nearly three months since I've uh, done this kind of content. We've been back with the podcast, done a couple, uh, one with Drew's, one with Bush, just talking about the off-season so far. But for the most part, kind of just been enjoying having not much football to talk about. I've kind of been tossing up at times, you know, is this a good time to make a video about something interesting? Uh, and each and every time I kind of just thought, you know what, I'm just kind of enjoying not making videos at the moment. So that's where I've been. Not much has changed since that. I've still got a mullet. I've still wear predominantly blue t-shirts. Uh, it's, it's Life is pretty normal. But with the preseason games having kicked off already, uh, we're pretty much on the brink of the AFL season. So it's about time to start making content again about some general football issues. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about Jack Darling and in particular the COVID-19 situation. It's not a video that I particularly want to be sitting here making. Of course, the implications for me as an Eagles fan and the effect it's going to have on my footy team are pretty obvious. But further to that, you know, I try not to make too much covid content. Obviously, it's something that's dominated the headlines, you know, globally for the last couple of years. And I'm sure we're all counting down to the days where, you know, COVID's not a prevalent factor when we're talking about, you know, life in general or in particular footy but of course COVID still having a stranglehold on the world generally and it's going to be a part of football discussions for you know the foreseeable future at least. The conversations are changing of course in 2020 it was about you know whether we're going to get a season in at all. 2021 was probably more about you know where are these games going to be played because of hubbing and borders closing etc but we seem to be kind of past those issues right at the minute but the prevalent talking points at the moment are vaccine mandates and of course the huge effect it's going to have this year when players inevitably test positive and have to isolate and you know the, the strain it's going to have on playing lists etc we won't talk about too much of that today we're here to talk about the current issue surrounding jack darling now the whole mandate situation is not just purely unique to jack darling of course we know liam jones retired showing a preference not to get vaccinated cam ellis yolman was in the same boat and we also know that jed anderson had hesitations about getting his second vaccine on the basis that his first reaction to the first jab um, was a pretty bad one in terms of his personal health but he seems to be vaccinated now and as far as we know he's uh, he's back training with north melbourne so that issue is closed the differences between the liam jones and ellis yolman ones were they sort of came out and uh, just made a decision to retire. They didn't want to play anymore uh, based on the mandates. They're unwilling to get vaccinated. The difference here with Jack Darling is there's really not quite clear what is going to happen next. And there doesn't seem to be a clear form of communication. And unfortunately, it seems like it's not a simple issue at all. And it may be one that sort of drags out throughout the season. So catching you up, if you aren't already caught up on the issue, essentially Darling uh, wasn't able to continue training past the deadline that was in late January because he hasn't been vaccinated to that point so he could no longer train or play for the West Coast Eagles while he remained unvaccinated. So the announcement of that and the, and the way we found out about that was kind of strange to be honest. There were some reports and rumours that Darling had been unvaccinated to that point uh, but then we also heard those rumours sort of well, seemingly quashed um, before you know ultimately it was revealed that no he's actually not vaccinated. So I think it was Ryan Daniels who reported it and then later that day the Eagles made a media statement confirming that Darling had failed to adhere to the COVID-19 vaccination mandate. So he wasn't able to train. What followed that was quite a strange and cryptic Instagram post from Jack Darling. So I'll read it for you now. This was after the Eagles had announced that he was no longer going to be training with them. Jack said, the reason for my absence today was due to doctor's orders. My club had been provided with a medical certificate. I've been diagnosed as suffering from a work-related injury and as a result, I'm on sick leave until further notice. He doesn't want to go into further details about that medical condition, which is fair enough because that is private information. He's doing his best to work with the club and his doctors so he can recover from his injury and he intends to return back training as soon as I am fit and able, he says. So yeah, kind of on the back of the media statement, uh, it was a little bit of a strange announcement from Darling there, almost suggesting that it wasn't vaccine related. But I think you can sort of take the Eagles media statement as face value that, you know, he wasn't vaccinated. Then we went through this sort of period of silence there where, you know, we weren't really sure what was going on other than reports that Darling was still training by himself because he couldn't train with the club. So he's keeping fit, which does show an intention to resume playing at some point. So rumors kind of swirled that Darling was waiting for the Novavax to hit Australia, uh, although other than a couple of rumors and reports that hasn't really proven to be true because I believe that is available now. Uh, and obviously he is not vaccinated still. It was later then revealed that Darling had actually applied for a medical exemption, presumably to do with this workplace injury that he had acquired. So we don't know what that, you know, that, work-related injury is. It's hard to imagine how such an injury would make you exempt 
from a getting a vaccine and as such it was actually rejected as well. So with Darling's medical exemption being rejected by the AFL, it then becomes clear he needs to get vaccinated or he can't play. But what we can gather is that Darling is still trying to play for the Eagles somehow this year. I know he sounded out a lawyer and the lawyer has come out and said that Darling is trying to find a way to play for the Eagles this year. Now if we can assume that he's not going to get vaccinated, the only way that he could possibly achieve that is somehow winning some sort of legal dispute. Now I'm not really sure where this sits legally. Yes I know I, I did actually study law and I know shockingly little about the legal profession but either way obviously you know COVID-19 mandates are kind of a, a new space, a new area of law it'd be fair to suggest. I'd imagine what Darling would then argue is some sort of discrimination, you know discriminating against players who are not vaccinated and therefore preventing them from you know working in their profession but as a layman and uh, not an expert at all I would just suggest that if that argument hasn't worked for you know the, the rest of Australians who you know can't eat in a cafe because they're unvaccinated or even you know keep their jobs I'd be surprised if Darling is set to win this particular legal dispute if that's what he's arguing. Now Ryan Daniels has also come out and said on SEN that this situation is gaming steam I quote. He suggests that this particular issue is not going to play out in a similar way to Jed Anderson who obviously ended up getting the vaccine. There's much more to play out in this scenario. West Coast have been pretty patient he suggests and they haven't really had any communication with Jack for a month. It's getting quite tense. Now it's hard to imagine what you know those communications would even look like you know from West Coast perspective all you can really ask is do you intend to get the vaccine and I imagine that's a pretty simple yes or no answer. You know going back to Jack's Instagram posts the the language that he used the reference to a workplace injury I don't know if I'm reading too much into it but it kind of looked like he was sort of positioning himself uh, with very sort of litigious language and then it, to me it sort of does imply that the they intend for legal action to take place. So, you know, regardless of where that currently sits, it's not going to be resolved anytime soon. So West Coast is faced with the following options. They can keep Darling on their main list, keep paying him his salary, or they can transfer him to an inactive list in the same way that you can do, you know, with players like Dane Venables, uh, who obviously just retired with a concussion issue. Darling can't play, so therefore he can be placed on an inactive list, be paid a portion of his salary, and the Eagles could actually draft another player straight out of, uh, I presume, the waffle they would choose. The third possible outcome which is the least likely in my opinion is outright terminating his contract. It's worth noting Darling is on a serious amount of money. He's contracted to the 2025 season, the end of that year I believe, and he's worth about $750,000 a year. So regardless of whether Darling wants to, to play football again, to forego that amount of money, that's literally millions of dollars he would be losing if he doesn't take the field again for West Coast. And perhaps that legal action isn't about coming back to play for the Eagles, but perhaps, you know, retaining the right to the salary that he was contracted for. To me, it's hard to imagine a scenario where Darling comes back from this quickly. I think at the very, very least, he's going to be on the inactive list this year. And perhaps maybe deep down, he's hoping that the mandate period will end, you know, maybe in a year or two when he's still contracted. And frankly, I think Darling has, you know, years left in the tank. Like I don't think he's close to retiring. Maybe he thinks that, you know, a year or two on the inactive list means that if and when vaccine mandates end, he could potentially return to playing AFL football. Now that does seem like an ambitious kind of hope, but let's be honest here, Darling doesn't have a whole lot of options. I don't know if I really want to get into the, the ethics around Darling choosing not to be vaccinated, to be honest. <sighs> I know it's a touchy subject and it's likely just to inflame people, to be honest. As a fan, I don't feel any particular sort of disappointment or anger in Jack Darling. Maybe that's just because I'm a little, uh, you know, cold on the AFL season. It's been three months and I'm only really just starting to care about, you know, football and the Eagles again. It's only just starting to get exciting now. So it doesn't maybe feel like such a huge blow right now, although it definitely is from a playing perspective. What I will say for Jack is that, you know, People might sort of label this as selfish, but you know, whether or not you agree or disagree with the decision not to be vaccinated or whether or not you agree with the mandate or not, it's hard to argue that this would be a selfish move from Jack because of what he would be giving up. Now, I'm sure we're all aware of what you would be giving up if you decide to be unvaccinated. So for him, you know, it's potentially millions of dollars. You know, it's his job. But further than that, you know, this guy literally can't go and eat in a cafe. You know, only recently was he allowed to go to the bottle shop. If he pursues a career outside of the AFL, you know, a lot of industries are vaccine mandated. I'm sure he could go out and start a podcast, but I assure you, Jack, it doesn't pay that well. 
is it selfish from you know a community standpoint you know people argue the reason you get a vaccine is so that you're less likely to pass it on to someone else now i'm not an expert on that and i'm just talking shit here but you kind of argue the point that the vaccine isn't doing an amazing job of suppressing infections it seems to be at the point where you know you're probably going to get it anyway so it's better to be vaccinated so that you yourself don't suffer as much so from that standpoint darling doesn't have a lot to gain by not being vaccinated and he sure as hell has a lot to lose in this scenario so i don't know if i necessarily Necessarily respect his decision. I personally am triple vaccinated and I probably would be regardless of the mandate. That being said here, we've got a man so sort of committed and devoted to his own beliefs and principles that he's willing to give up a shitload just to uphold them. So while I don't know if I necessarily, you know, think that's worthy of a lot of respect or anything like that. I also just don't feel like a pylon is necessary. I think Darling's very, very aware of the ramifications to himself of him choosing not to get vaccinated. Well, that's it, guys. That is my two cents on the whole Jack Darling situation. I'm sure we have a bit more to play out as the uh, as the weeks and months progress. My personal prediction is we won't see Jack Darling this year. Whether or not we get a formal retirement, I also think that's unlikely. I think this is probably going to drag on for a little bit as well. And unfortunately, it's a unfortunate distraction uh, from you know the AFL and and get excited about this season. It's an unfortunate distraction for my club as well. That being said, there are bigger things in this world than football. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Anyway, guys, I welcome your comments in the comment section below. Sort of give me your two cents. Again, stay amicable. I'd really rather not this comment section not to sort of descend into a, a political debate. But by all means, if you have an opinion, let me know what it is. Before I go, guys, make sure you do check out the sponsors of the True Footy YouTube channel, manscaped.com. You can get the, uh, the details of their offer down below in the the description of this video you get 20 percent off and free shipping on their products and thankfully they've been a great sponsor and somehow have stuck with me despite the fact that i've barely uploaded in three months but it's good to be back it's great to have you all back it feels good to be uploading again and uh you know hopefully soon there's some exciting football to talk about and not so much of this political shit but look after yourselves stay safe and uh hope you're all doing well thanks guys and i'll see you in the next one